False white gaming theorems are all about answering the question. Why do certain Pokemon succeed while others do not? Such answers are not just found in simplistic form, i.e. why is this kind of Pokemon good with the answer because of X, Y, and Z, but also in explorations of their nuances, as in why X, Y, and Z is important. X, Y, Z has been different in each video, move pulls, abilities, and so on. But today we're examining perhaps the most fundamental aspect of Pokemon, which plays heavily into its success. Success. It's typing. It's usually the first thing we learn about a Pokemon, dating all the way back to when we chose between grass, fire, and water type starters. And it is indeed among the most important aspects of the game of Pokemon. Do you know your type advantages? After all, typing is so powerful that you could have a plus six special attack Ultra Necrozma using Draco Meteor, and it would still do a cool 0% to a level one Cleffa. Now, obviously, the game of Pokemon has a lot more to it than a simple type A beats type B beats type C rock, paper, scissors dynamic. Water types don't always beat fire types, for example, and even when they do, it's still not quite so simple. But even so, typing is an integral aspect of the game of Pokemon, and it drives and shapes successes, failures, and forms of Pokemon and metagames. In this video, we'll be exploring how typing can be a blessing, a curse, or a mix of both, and which Pokemon better exemplifies this than everyone's favorite fire moth. As such, we present to you the Volcarona Theorem. We'll jump right into Volcarona itself, and not just Volcarona, but others of its like. Those famously plagued by one of the worst weaknesses in the game, a quadruple weakness to Stealth Rock. Losing 50% of your health just for switching in is more than your garden variety hurdle to overcome. Of course, Volcarona did get banned in Generation 9 recently for being able to change its typing through terrestrialization, whether it was to gain further boost on a stab while minimizing the weaknesses of its original dual typing by shifting to just bug or fire, or changing to a different type entirely to thwart would-be counterattacks, but it's hardly unique in that regard as the incredible offensive defensive mechanic, especially alongside the incredible coverage of Terra Blast, has been abused by many an excellent Pokemon since the generation came out. Sometimes Pokemon with this weakness can thrive. In addition to Volcarona, there's also Mega Charizard Y, and if you extend the gamut to Ubers, Ho-Oh. But that is a matter of attributes beyond just their typing. The flip side of this coin is that Pokemon like Butterfree would likely still be terrible, even if they possess a quadruple resistance to Stealth Rock. Of course, there are plenty of Pokemon who are rife with potential, but are simply too ruined by rocks to be used consistently in the highest tiers, or sometimes even at all. From Yon Mega to Moltres to Articuno to most famously, Base Charizard. Even the Smogin Bird itself, Talonflame, wound up falling out of favor in Oraz OU after some time from how crippling its Stealth Rock weakness was, without being impactful enough to necessitate such a hindrance. In regards to typing itself, even the likes of Volcarona, great as it is, is plagued by it. In pre-heavy duty boost generations, all the team support in the world isn't always sufficient to protect them from the pesky presence of pebbles, and it does affect them greatly. Many of Volcarona sweep has been neutered by it only being at half health when attempting to set up its quiver dance. This even affects its item choice. It would absolutely love to run life orb or other offensively geared items, and it sometimes does, yet often leftovers or even citrus berry are chosen to help offset its stealth rock weakness and in Gen 8 and beyond, Heavy Duty Boots are downright required. And Volcarona isn't just hindered by its rock weakness either. Being weak to water is far from good, no matter what generation. However, as much as Volcarona's typing holds it back, it is also the source of its power. Fire Bug is a wonderfully complementary stab combination. Not only does it give Volcarona superb, super effective coverage, but the two types also hit each other's recess at least neutrally. Though not usually thought of as such, its typing is also quite useful defensively, which is why you'll occasionally see bulky or even outright defensive Volcarona sets. Resisting fairy, fighting, ice, steel, and grass is quite valuable after all. And it's these resists in conjunction with its many neutralities that give it such a unique defensive presence. Neutrality is a huge part of the typing negotiation that goes on in battles, and that's part of why Volcarona is so hard to stop from setting up. It's neutral to a lot, and it's got the bulk to take many neutral hits. Before Kyurem got banned from Gen 8 OU, Volcarona was one of the few Pokemon capable of taking on many of its sets, not just because it resisted ice, but because it was neutral to other moves it liked using. Volcarona perfectly illustrates the duality of typing, as both its weaknesses and strengths intertwine to form the backbone of its identity. So too do its quad rocks weak companions. The many fire flying Pokemon are both burdened by their weaknesses to electric and blessed by their immunity to ground.
Of course, one doesn't have to possess a Volcarona tier weakness to Stealth Rock to be bothered by the move, but there are plenty of Rock's weak flying and fire types that succeed in spite of it. So why is it that ice types, which are equally bothered by Rock's, have a much tougher time finding that same success? Simple, because the ice type is loaded with weaknesses and only has one resist, which is to opposing ice. Sure, ice types tend to have a second typing, but the weaknesses of the ice type have been dragging those secondary types down forever. For example, example, Cloyster in Gens 2 and 3 has just about no use for its ice typing, while it is made significantly worse for its weaknesses to fighting and rock, as well as being neutral to fire and steel. Of course, on the offensive side of the spectrum, ice is one of the most ferocious stabs in the game, but it is a difficult balance to strike. Contrast this with, say, Victini. It's got many weaknesses, but it's also overflowing with resistances. Fighting, Fairy, Psychic, Grass, Steel, Ice, Fire, which means it is constantly finding something to switch in against. Ice types pack the same weakness without the benefits. One doesn't even need to be plagued by a Stealth Rock weakness or a weakness to anything at all to know the downfalls of a lack of resistances. Normal types are only weak to fighting, but their only resistance is a ghost immunity. To make matters worse, they don't even have Ice's upside of wielding fearsome offensive stab. Normal doesn't hit anything super effectively at all. Normal's lack of weaknesses works for Pokemon like Chansey and Blissey that are so over the top bulky they don't need resist. But pretty much anything short of that isn't going to cut it, barring Gen 4 Clefable, whose access to one of the best abilities in the game, Magic Guard, is its own form of over the top excellence and how it completely neuters the passive damage omnipresent in Pokemon. Just as Chansey and Blissey neuter all manner of special attacks, pretty much everything else though, even Snorlax, an incredibly bulky Pokemon, couldn't handle Normal's complete lack of resistances as early on as Gen 3, let alone anything afterwards, and most Normals aren't nearly as bulky as Snorlax. Even the occasional Normal type with secondary typing would probably be better off without it. Gaining the fighting weakness or becoming neutral to fighting is just about never worth the ghost immunity. Normals tend to fail on both offense and defense. At least Ice types are among the scariest threats in the game. Funnily enough, both Normal and Ice types were superb in Generation 1, which is an effective reminder that good typing can be generational. Before Generation 6, poison typing was generally not desirable. The weaknesses to Psychic and Earthquake were significant, and his resistance to fighting and Toxic, while valuable, weren't quite good enough to outweigh them. Generation 4 helped by giving grounded poison types the ability to absorb Toxic Spikes upon entry, but it still wasn't enough to fundamentally change their place in the typing hierarchy. That wouldn't come until Generation 6, with Poison's dominance of the Fairy type, both resisting it and hitting it super effectively. Indeed, part of the reason Poison hadn't been so highly valued beforehand was because there were so many resistances to it. You wouldn't want to spam it as an attack. However, with the shifting landscape of the fairy infested Gen 6 and onwards, suddenly you could very feasibly get strong mileage out of moves like Sludge Wave from Gengar and Needle King and Sludge Bomb from Mega Venusaur. Additionally, the increased power of fighting types over the generations and the decreased value of psychic types meant that Poisons were better off as a whole. The greatest example of Typing's impact being generational is Dragon. In the first three generations, it ranged from decent to actively harmful, almost like what normal Typing would become. Its resists weren't bad, but hardly essential. While its stab options ranged from non-existence to terrible to decent, its peerless neutral coverage was nice, but the power wasn't exactly game-breaking, and the super effective hit only against other Dragons was similar. Useful? Sure. Hugely significant? Not quite. Then in Generation 4, Draco Meteor was introduced, Outrage was buffed, and the fact that Dragon's only resistance was Steel finally actually meant something, especially helped out by the fact that the new physical special split meant Dragon Dance could boost physical Dragon Stab, and new items like Life Orb and Choice Specs ensured everything was power crept. With all of this, Dragon rose to become the defining type in Generations 4 and 5. With such immense power behind the attacks being neutral to Dragon in many cases, meant an argument could be made for being weak to it. Such was their KO potential, and since that went for every non-steel, that went for a lot of Pokemon. Plus, there were plenty of dragons duking it out for the cases of actual super effective hits as well. Dragon was so powerful and prominent in Generation 4, it introduced the team building rule for every team needing at least one steel, and at the peak of the Latias and Salamence fueled dragon dominance, that rule was more like two or even three. There was quite a fair share of successful teams with the structure of three dragons, three steel. Then Generation 5 
Hive came around, and the Dragon Powered metagame reached even higher Draco Meteoric Heights. Spamming Dragon moves was easy, riskless, and yielded results. They were so strong that even resistant steel types had the nasty tendency of taking heavy damage. Then Generation 6 came around and added Fairy types, and suddenly being a Dragon type wasn't all that anymore. Sure, Dragons were and continued to be excellent Pokemon, but the days of mindlessly spamming Dragon moves were decidedly over. Now, if you wanted to use a Dragon type, it had to offer something else, like its resistances, which previously were generally more of the excuse needed to get the Dragon on the field for its big damage, but now were its source of value in and of themselves. Dragon moves remain threatening as well, of course, but were no longer the metagame warping bombs one could toss around without a second thought to damage everything to some degree. In fact, in Generation 7 and onwards, Fairy type became so popular that many Dragons regularly didn't even pack Dragon Stab anymore. If Dragons are the quintessential example of generational typing, then its former lone resist steel stands as its direct opposite. It has been far and away the best defensive typing in the game since its inception in generation 2. It boasts a stunning list of resistances and even when it lost two of them in gen 6 which are dark and ghost it received an incredible new one in fairy. Remember how normal and ice typing are such hindrances that they tend to drag down the dual type pokemon saddled with them? Well steel typing is the opposite of that. It elevates everything that has it. Bug types are famously flawed but as soon as fortress or scissor or genesect grab that secondary steel typing they become among the best pokemon around several of the best most long-lasting defensive pokemon ever like skarmory heatran and ferrothorn do so off of the strength of being steel steel typing is so good that even partial ice typing can't bring it down see alolan sand slash which is quite an effective pokemon and that's just defensively while steel isn't known as a meta game crushing offensive type it's been dishing out huge damage as far back as generation 3 where metagross and its meteor mass burst onto the scene generation 4 up the ante with scissor's bullet punch jirachi's iron head and magnezone's flash cannon once gen 6 added the fairy type steel gained another super effective target becoming more overall efficient in the same way the poison type did previously steel offense wasn't used for its widespread coverage but now the likes of bisharp threatened a greater portion of the metagame with it now before we get into our final typing, we must give an honorable mention to immunity abilities which effectively act as an extension of typing, with none of the downsides. The most glaring example is Levitate, which has bestowed Earthquake and Spikes immunities onto many Pokemon who are incredibly dependent on it ever since Gen 3. Volt Absorb, Lightning Rod, and Motor Drive take it a step further, making the Pokemon with them not just immune to electric moves like a ground type would be, but actually getting stronger when hit by them. Then there's Flash Fire, Water Absorb, and Storm. Storm Drain. These abilities create immunities that otherwise don't exist. There's no type that's immune to fire or water, but with these abilities, that aspect gets factored into something like Heatran's list of resistances, just as anything else would. Finally, Ground Flying is one of the most elite combinations in the game as well, with a lengthy list of valuable resistances to go along with the eternal reliability that is Stab Earthquake. Ground Flying is so good, it had people making Gligar work in Gen 3 OU, and Gligar is far Far from a good Pokemon in its own right. It was carried nearly fully by its typing. Being a ground type is already one of the most desirable traits in Pokemon, and so is being a flying type. Fittingly, when you pair these two, the results are some of the best Pokemon around. Gliscor was incredible right from Generation 4 before it even had Poison Heal, and both forms of landers have been among the most impactful competitive Pokemon to ever exist on both sides of the offensive defensive spectrum. Once Evil Light came out and its move pool expanded a little bit, Gligar made full use of its amazing typing in the lower tiers as well. But even before that, it was one of the best Pokemon in Generation 4 Little Cub. Ground Flying is the kind of dual type version of being Steel. You can give it to pretty much anything and it'll put in a lot of work off of that alone. And that's it! While typing obviously isn't everything, it provides the bedrock for pretty much every other aspect of Pokemon to work off of. It's not just about super effective and not very effective either. Neutrality plays a great role. Part of the reason Volcarona is so dangerous after all is that it's neutral to many attacks, which it can survive and quiver dance in the face of. Now of course the super effective side and the dance to abuse or avoid it is much of what competitive Pokemon is all about and its impact can't be overstated. If there's a successful competitive Pokemon, odd are its typing plays a gigantic role in its success thanks for watching everyone and as always if you like the video and you want to see more be sure to subscribe to false swipe gaming for more weekly pokemon content and in the comments i want to know what do you think about this theorem are there any other theorems you'd want to see whatever it is let me know in the comments and thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well
and follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.